Welcome to the Authority of Love. My name is Greg Williams, and I want to thank you for joining us on this broadcast, or maybe you're listening on a podcast or a video. Thank you for that as well, and also for sharing that. Uh, I've had a few that have come up and said, hey, someone pointed me to your uh, your ministry site or your podcast or, or broadcast, and uh, uh, really enjoyed it. And uh, So thank you. My, my prayer is that uh, whoever hears this uh, will be strengthened and encouraged, uh, challenged if it may be, but blessed in their walk with the Lord or to come to know Christ as Savior and walk with Him as Lord. Uh, I have to say this. Thank you for sticking with us through this year-long deep dive. We're a little over halfway through, of course, uh, this deep dive into God's Word through the incredible devotional, My Utmost for His Highest by Oswald Chambers. I encouraged and challenged all listeners that this would be from the very beginning and have said it many times that this would be meat and not milk and therefore it would not be easy but if you would stay with it it would certainly be worth it i, I hope and pray that you have done so and found this to be the case last week's messages continued with this same theme of a deeper walk with christ and the holy spirit in the word uh, we all need this and for the most part our churches are falling woefully short in helping to bring it about. So we're going to continue as I long ago determined that this is what God would have me to do to encourage and challenge uh, the church and church leaders and pastors. If, if they would hear it, that's up to them, but to step it up with regard to true discipleship among their congregants and in our culture. I also have to give a shout out last week to our wonderful co-host Adia Wushner on Wednesday for Women and David Walls on Family Foundation Fridays as they always bring it. So if you missed any of those, any of those were previously or any others, there's a lot more at Love and Lordship, loveandlordship.com, love, A-N-D, lordship.com. You can also connect with me. Email is loveandlordship at gmail.com, loveandlordship at gmail.com. And again, thank you for those who have connected, agree or disagree, encouraged, uh, questions, whatever those are. We thank you for that and uh, uh, welcome them. Today's message presents, uh, if I could say it, a bit of an oxymoron especially with regard to our following one of the all-time greatest selling devotionals in history. It's actually second only to the Bible itself, this my utmost for his highest is. And yet, on the other hand, it's not contradictory at all. Think about it. If we are truly willing to make time each and every day devoted to studying, praying, and growing in the Lord, i.e. devotion, right, then we are very likely going to have times when Holy Spirit brings things to our minds and hearts that in our flesh is frustrating or maybe even worse. In today's episode, Chambers asked the very straightforward question with regard to our devotion to Christ as Lord. And he also reminds us how Jesus lovingly, although we may not always think so, how he lovingly handled this. The question and title is simply, are you discouraged in devotion? Now, if you're following along in the booklet, the devotional booklet, or at myutmost.org, we're on August the 17th. Most of what we hear in today's messages are nearly always wrapped in some kind of feel-good presentation or trying to convince us that it will always turn out in a pleasing way for us. This is usually done from the perspective of flesh and happiness in the interpretation and the presentation to keep folks coming back and giving and serving regularly so the church continue to look good and, quote, grow, unquote. Because of this fleshly or happiness slant, it is also almost always distorted, watered down, or actually changed from what Scripture is actually saying. Is it any wonder that today's churches in America have so little influence in our culture? and that the culture has such great influence in our churches? We address this in our book, The Authority of Love, Second Edition, and we sum it up with this quote, Today's churches have become so culturally relevant that they have become culturally irrelevant. No one can honestly disagree with this, and I think today's message addresses much of the reason. Chambers begins with, Luke 18, 22, a certain ruler asked him, Jesus that is, good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? 
Now, most of our listeners and nearly all churchgoers will be familiar with the story of the rich young ruler, but allow me to make sure that all of us are aware of this story in the context. A rich man approached Jesus and asked a salvation question. What must I do to inherit inherit eternal life or, or be saved, right? Jesus begins with the law and tells him to keep it, to which the young man asks, which ones? Jesus quotes the last six of the Ten Commandments, all regarding human-to-human relationships. The rich young man states, I've kept those since my youth. All good, right? Well, it should be good to go and be assured of his eternal life, salvation, and that's what he'd ask about. Jesus knew this wasn't the case, and so he continued. This is where we pick up today's Devo. When the rich young ruler asked Jesus how to win eternal life, Jesus didn't respond with anxiousness or concern. He made no attempt to keep the ruler there with him. Obviously, that was the ruler's choice. He simply stated what the ruler had to do. Go sell everything you have, then come follow me. Luke 18, 22. Our Lord never pleaded. He never cajoled or entrapped, or let me add this, softened or changed his message. He simply spoke the sternest words that mortal ears ever heard. Then he left it alone. By the way, the heart of Jesus and the words leading up to Jesus' final statement to this man also included this. Jesus looked at him and loved agapeo, rooted in agape. Remember? It says it looked at him and loved him. And the Greek word there is agapeo. He then said, You still lack one thing. How in the world do we reconcile what Chambers has rightfully shared about Jesus' stern response, the sternest words ears have ever heard, and the fact that Jesus loved this young man? Well, let's see. Chambers asks, have you ever heard the Lord say something stern to you? And then he says this, if you haven't, I question if you've ever heard him say anything at all. Jesus Christ says a great deal that we listen to, but do not hear. When we do hear, we find that his words are amazingly hard. You run into that in any of your churches today? Because that's an ouch. How's that going to work in most of today's churches? Because it is very true. Jesus is speaking to the very thing that we have to die to and receive from him. Die to the flesh, receive his spirit and his eternal life. And that doesn't happen naturally or easily. If I have listened deliberately to Jesus when he said something difficult to me, I know that I can't just explain it away. It's something meant specifically for me, something which demands I make a choice. Remember, every one of us has sin in our flesh that must be killed, died to. We must willingly crucify it in order for us to live for Christ. That's what he's dealing with with the rich young ruler right here. Paul said it in Galatians 2.20. The life I now live is, is not in my flesh. It's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives in me. Okay? Just like the rich young ruler, it may be money, or it might be porn or sex or fame or success, alcohol, drugs, pride. You fill in the blank. You see, Chambers says the ruler understood the choice Jesus was giving him. He heard Jesus' words, thought about what obeying them would mean, and decided he couldn't do it. I've stated many times in our ministry that the greater part of God's word is simple and easy to understand. The difficulty is not in the understanding of it, but it comes in whether or not I'm willing to die to my flesh and choose to obey those simple, straightforward words. That's where the rub comes. Chambers continues, he didn't go away from Jesus defiantly, see, because he understood what was being asked, but with a broken heart and sadly. The ruler had come to Jesus full of the fire of seemingly earnest desire But that desire was rooted in his own idea of what it would look like. And Jesus' words froze him. Instead of producing enthusiastic devotion, they produced heartbreaking discouragement. And let me add this. And remember, Jesus loved him with a godly love, which means his response to this man could never compromise 
God's truth. Remember, agape is preferring God above all else. I cannot tell you what you want to hear if it's not in line with the Father. And that was much more important to Jesus, and it should be to us, than trying to find a way to get the guy to follow Jesus on his own terms. There was a reason Jesus let the ruler leave in this dejected state. Our Lord knows perfectly well that once his word is heard, sooner or later it will bear fruit. The terrible thing is that some of us prevent it from bearing fruit in our present lives. I wonder what we will say when we do make up our minds to be devoted to him. One thing is certain, he will never shame us for our past refusals to hear him. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your grace in that. Food for thought as we close out. Let me close by making one more observation in line with Chambers' last statement. Notice again that the man's question was a salvation question. What must I do to be saved? Inherit eternal life, right? But Jesus' response was a discipleship answer. Then come follow me. If you will do what I ask, then you can come follow me. You can't make a case in Scripture for one who is saved by Jesus and not a disciple of his. The ultimate fruit of salvation, if the truth is followed, will always be a growing, maturing disciple of Jesus Christ. If you're discouraged in your devotion, keep your eyes, your ears, your heart, and your mind on him. Love in action. Spend time with God and his word, prayer, and listening every day. Begin with the text in these messages. Or check out the Gospel of John, the Psalms, the Proverbs. Those are a few just tips if you want to start somewhere. Number two, ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. Number three, let me ask this. Have you ever been discouraged in God's word to you? If so, have you searched until you found the source of that discouragement? Number four, there will be times of discouragement in this flesh versus spirit battle. Figure out what you need to do to walk with Christ or, or begin to walk with Christ or continue to walk with Christ and then follow through no matter what. Check out tomorrow's episode. I'm going to ask this question. Have you ever felt like you've been left out or unnoticed? That's what we're going to talk about. Invite your family, friends, loved ones, and enemies to hear more of this, and thank you for doing so. Remember, you can find out more at Love and Lordship, Love and Lordship, A and D in the middle, Love and Lordship dot com. That's our website for the ministry. You can find uh, videos, podcast articles on these, and much more. Love to know what you think about it, so connect with me at loveandlordship at gmail.com, love, A-N-D, lordship at gmail.com. You can also check us out on Facebook, Love and Lordship Facebook page. So love to know what you think there and share that. Appreciate that. Now, if you'd like to donate, you can click on the Give tab there near the upper right. It takes a minute or so. You can give one time or ongoing, and all donations are fully tax deductible and greatly appreciated. You can give by mail. Some people do that. Make it out to Love and Lordship. Send it to 324 Timothy Drive, Nicholasville, Kentucky, 40356. Again, if it's not us, then keep praying until the Lord shows you where he'd have you give and partner with another kingdom ministry and then follow through in obedience. Thank you for joining us. Thanks for your prayers. Thanks always to the Lord. Make it a great day in the love and lordship of Christ. Stay tuned in just a little while, 1245, for my good friend Greg Horn and Hope is Here. I'm Greg Williams, and as always, you're listening to The Authority of Love.